I'm gonna start by saying that if you can hear loads of wind and if you can hear rain, I'm actually home because I've had to cancel all my dogs and I'm on the top floor. So the wind and rain is probably gonna be really bad throughout this video. So I'm really sorry about that. Every day on my Instagram and on my TikTok, I get messages from like the loveliest people asking, how have you set up your business? Do you have any tips on setting up your business? Like, just tell me how, give me some advice. I only started my business in September, 2021. So I am so, so new to this, just like some of you are. Um, so I am learning on the job. I am still doing some of my courses now. I still message other people for advice who have been in this industry for years. Um, so I am not there yet, but from a beginner and someone who's very new to owning their own business, I'm gonna give my advice to you guys as best as I can. Um, but please note that, yeah, I am, I'm a newbie. I've got a cuppa with me, my little um, sausage dog mug, so cute. Mm. Also, does anyone else keep the tea bag in the tea? Because I like my tea that strong. So I've just wrote down, um, whoa, the most like commonly asked questions um, that I get on my Instagram um, to do with starting a business. I actually did a TikTok when I first started that blew up on TikTok basically saying how I started and I was three weeks in um, and I'm just gonna kind of talk about those tips again but explain them a bit more. <sighs> Why am I so out of breath? So the first one that I have wrote down is your insurance. So I am with Pet Plan Sanctuary. Um, I pay for it monthly. It's not too expensive and this covers a list of things. I so your insurance is really important because it will cover your equipment um, it will cover the dog if they injure themselves in your care. Um, it's just super, super, super important to have insurance. Um, this was like the first thing I did before I set up my business. I was like, right, I need to make sure that the dog's safe, I'm safe, the equipment's safe, the keys are safe, everything is sorted. There are a number of different insurance companies that you could go through. Um, just do your research. Have a look at some other businesses and see who they're with. Um, and then you can kind of see what best suits you. So this one's kind of obvious, but... Um, courses and how qualified you are um so i am always adding courses to the list um so first aid is probably really really important i've got my canine uh, body language course coming up um and there's like a list of others that i want to do as well um just to add to the list get more experience get qualified um and obviously people are more comfortable knowing that you are trained and you're qualified rather than having no experience at all um so yeah get as much experience as you can even if it's just going to volunteer in the kennels for a bit volunteer for a dog walker for a bit just get some experience bear in mind i started my business having a lot of dog experience from like owning dogs walking dogs stuff like that but i didn't um i didn't go to college and study you know canine care or anything like that it was all you know just kind of having my own dog friends dogs horses like it's all kind of incorporated um but i now have quite a few courses underneath my belt um so i've learned quite a lot and i have more knowledge when i first started i wanted my logo and my brand name to be quite broad just in case i ever want to incorporate my qualification in equine um in the future um so i wanted all paws because all paws you could put that even though obviously horses isn't you know paw they haven't got paws but you know all paws kind of incorporates not just dogs you could have a load of animals underneath that category so in case in the future i wanted to incorporate other care and other animal services uh, my name kind of stands for that um so yeah that would that comes on to my next tip is that just be original with your name and your logo don't copy everyone else like stand out from the crowd you want to make your name known you want people to know oh that business that's got like a catchy name um that the logo is really like boom here i am that's my personal opinion anyways i just feel like you need to stand out from the crowd look different look bold look you know professional i just i just like it that way like my i love my logo the girl who did it i'll tag her instagram in my in the description um she was amazing and she did it so quickly and bless her heart she did it free of charge for me when she first started and it was still incredible um so definitely go and have a look at her instagram um and message her i'm sure she'll be able to help you out so when i first started i remember this so clearly um i was so excited about any client any inquiry inquiry i meant inquiry 
any dog that needed walking and i was like yes yes yeah i was just yes man for every single client for the first like three months i think and then it got to a point where i was traveling miles and miles out of my catchment area just because someone had asked me to walk their dog um i was just traveling here there everywhere i was spending so much on fuel but because i was just so excited to have clients and to have dogs to walk I didn't care. I didn't care how far it was. I didn't care what they were asking of me. I didn't really mind that I was pricing them too less for the distance that I was going. Um, I just wanted to do it. Um, and then it came to realise that I was really, really stressed out. For, probably for about two to three weeks where I had this period where I was so stressed out because I just couldn't reach anyone within my day. Bear in mind, my day was eight to five. I couldn't reach everyone um, because the way I had set out my dogs and set out my group walks and said yes to people that I shouldn't actually have said yes to because they were too far for me. Um, I learned the hard way, so I was traveling miles out. In grand total, I was spending two hours, so I'd, get, I'd drive like 35 minutes there, walk them for an hour, drive 35 minutes back. That's two hours out of my day gone for one dog and I made no profit because by the time I'd taken away my fuel, my time, um, like all my expenses, like my insurance and stuff, I'd made zero, zero profit from that walk. Um, so I had to put my foot down and I was really disheartened by this because I had to say like, look, I'm really sorry, but you're out of my catchment area. I didn't realise when I first started that I needed to stay within, you know, this sort of area. And I remember thinking I'm awful, like I'm not good enough. I don't have the time. Like, am I doing this right? And I remember genuinely thinking like maybe I've not made the right decision because I'm not actually providing a service. I quickly learned that you just have to be patient. You have to wait for these clients. Um, because they will come up in your area, they will. Over time, they do come up and, you know, it works out so well. I've got such a nice routine with all my dogs and all my walks. I know where we're walking, I know what time we're gonna be there. Um, but at the beginning, I was just taking on anything, anywhere. Um, and I was just driving miles and miles and I had zero time. And I'd look at my money at the end of the day and think I've literally made no profit because now I've got to go put 50 quid in my tank. So yeah just be patient i know it's so so hard because i remember thinking oh my god i'm so busy and then like oh i've made no money um so 100 percent, if you can take on these clients and work it out brilliant that's amazing carry on you do you you know get those clients get that bread sort of thing but um yeah don't take on too much sorry if the camera's moved a little bit i just had to check that it was um recording um so when you first start um post on your social media every single day instagram tiktok facebook post every day even if it's just pictures and videos of your own dogs uh go and steal your friends dogs um and go for a walk with them take pictures of them be active on your social media because people going onto your facebook page and if they see you haven't posted in a month they're going to be thinking oh yeah no like she's not active she's not you know she doesn't have clients anymore sort of thing they might even think you're shut um they might even think you've not carried on um so stay active on your social media i was posting every single day literally just pictures of my dogs uh, me on a walk i did a post introducing myself um just keep that social media so active get people sharing everything add to your stories i was annoying everyone in that first like two to three months of me being open my social media was booming um and i was just probably irritating people's feed because I was just always posting because I just wanted my name out there. Along with like the social media thing, tell everyone what qualifications you have, tell everyone um, what you're all about, tell everyone how your days are gonna work. So people have an insight and they don't just think you're gonna, you're just some random person taking their dog for a walk. Like you wanna make it a little bit personal, but professional. I had a few questions um, regarding my group walks and basically having the confidence to grow your group walks and stuff um and i would just say with a group walk when i first started start them literally as two dogs so try and get two dogs that are going to get along they have a similar sort of temperament um and just start with two when you first begin and just work your way up that's what i did because in my ka i could only safely travel three like a lot of you know um so a lot of the time i had two or three um, and that was really, really crucial when I first started because I learned how my walks need to go and how I need to control the dogs to be safe, to keep other people safe, to keep other dogs safe, um, work on recall and make sure that my walks wasn't just them coming to me, going crazy, going up to any other dog they see, going up to any other person they see, running across the road, like none of that. So when you first start, just have literally do solo walks for a month if you need to, to get to know the dog so the dog can get to know you. You can work out how good is their recall. 
do they run over to other people can what are they like on the lead like all these different things you can build this up um because don't get me wrong i definitely did not start walking four to five dogs um not at all it was literally two or three three mainly towards like the three month mark um but yeah just do it slowly do it at your own pace even if you just stick to individuals um i know a lot of people who have actually done that they've just started with solos and then they build their groups up so that is a good way to grow your confidence and to get to know the dogs and see what works and what doesn't sorry guys my timer went off for my washing and now the phone has moved again i'm gonna be that really annoying person to say that i'm not gonna say my income not gonna say my pricing only because i kind of actually think it's irrelevant because every single area is different so where i live and where you live the price range is going to be different depending depending on how many walkers there are in the area how many doggy daycares are there in the area how far have you got to travel to all your clients um do you need to pick the dogs up and then travel even further to go to a good dog walking place that's suitable there's so many different things that i think impact how you price your walks that is down to you so the way that i price my group walks is kind of irrelevant unless you live next door um because i can you know you can kind of compare the way that i did it is i looked at other businesses in the area um and i kind of was like right what's too much what's too little what's kind of in the middle um i have recently in november would you say that's recently not really in november i did have a price increase and recently i had a price increase as well for some of my clients and everyone was really really happy with it um and completely understood why i did it but that is another tip I'd say actually, when you first start, maybe start a bit lower for the first six months. I know I definitely did that. This is just my personal preference that when I first started, I was quite, I had quite a low price range. I had another little price increase just because of the price of fuel, um, which is just mental. And everyone was so nice about it. They completely accepted it. I'm doing well in that aspect. So yeah, your income and your pricing, you need to kind of do your own research on that um look at other businesses in the area google some other dog walking businesses and give them a message um so yeah i think that's my tips on like income and your pricing and stuff everyone always asks me as well um have you registered your business obviously i have i'm self-employed you need to register your business when you start to tell the government that you are self-employed um you go on the gov website do a self-assessment and they'll send you etc etc um if you're confused on this um there's so much online that you can read through um and also that goes on to my next point if you want to consider an accountant um you can arrange a meeting for free like a consultation sort of thing and meet up with the accountant you can ask them questions i mean i don't actually know if this is all accountants but mine was really good and we had a consultation and he basically told me everything that i needed to be doing and like have i registered for self-assessment on the gov website and i had done that already like luckily but yeah register your business tell the government that you're self-employed so that you can do your tax return when it comes to that time honestly starting my business has been the best decision i have made i always say to people now i generally feel unemployed because i just don't feel like i have a job even though i literally work my ass off i say to my friends all the time like i literally don't feel employed because i'm just doing my thing i'm doing my business like i'm like this is so so cool um so honestly i couldn't recommend it enough but um i think my top tip would be be original be bold make sure you've got all the safety precautions in place um you know treat the dogs like your own obviously because like when i think about the dogs now i'm like no they're my dogs like obviously i know then i don't own them i don't care for them i know that 100 percent, obviously but like they're like my little babies they're like my best friends like especially the ones that i have like every single week i'm like bestie you're joining in um so honestly it's the best thing i've ever done um and i can't wait to learn more as well because like i was saying i'm so new to this i'm still learning um, and I get things wrong, like on my TikTok, I post things and people are like, oh, no, don't do that. And I'm so grateful that people help each other out. Because, um, yeah, we're all still learning, especially me. I'm literally so, so new to this industry. Um, I can't wait to look back at all my videos in like a few years time and be like, oh, why were you doing that sort of thing? Um, but yeah, I hope that kind of answers all your questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to send me a message on Instagram and I'll reply to you on there. Um, but yeah, good luck with your business if you're just starting. Hang in there because the few first few months are probably going to be quiet. If they're not, fab.
have the best time ever. Um, I need to go get my washing out of the washing machine. So that's fun. Uh, make sure to follow my TikTok and my Instagram. I am active on there every single day, posting throughout the day. So if you want to see more daily updates, always go follow me on there. But yeah.